Yo, what's poppin? Welcome to Broman Brapsody. This is where we review cars and motorcycles. Today we are back at Motorcycles of Greensboro, but I can't find the professor. Oh, there he ah, is. Bro, you made it, professor, man. Professor, hey, how are you? How are you? Welcome back, man. Thank you, sir. This is the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, the professor. But beautiful bike, huh? What do you think? It's gorgeous. It's a Beamer, after all. This is the 2022 okay. S1000RR with an M package. It also has a few more M things like those brightly colored blue calipers in the front the seats man it is a firm seat the exhaust system hello there <laughs> there's nothing hello, holding hello, any hello. exhaust back and in today's episode we're going to talk about the bike we're going to see some of its cool features take it out on the road share my thoughts with you guys talk about the cost of ownership and assign it a bromance score but before we do all of that if you're new to broman give us a like and hit that subscribe button we put out content every week and your support would mean a lot it's me it's your boy bro and i am your broman The initial release of it was the top sold super bike mm. on the market for many, many years. Uh, BMW had great success with the motorcycle. And if you remember that one, that was one, the, 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 one, the, 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 the headlight, one yeah. headlight was round and the other one, yeah. The fact is the bike looked well, different, it, it but it looked, performed well. It looked different and it looked cool, man. I don't know, to me it always looked cool. But I love this paint scheme with that M package, this red, white, and blue. It, it is, it's, an, it's a very nice paint scheme. Uh, it definitely attracts a lot of attention. I and mean, this is the top of the food chain when it comes to production. Racing gets all the latest and greatest mm -hmm. developments. Eventually the super bike gets those developments and then those developments trickle down into some of the others, into the, uh, some of the other motorcycles as well. 1,000 cc yeah. engine, 205 horses, 83 foot pound of torque. Yeah, and it's in an inline four inline too. Four. So, and it's really torquey for an inline four. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it surprised me when, you know, when I twisted the throttle a little, uh, just on how much torque this inline this four put out. Because yeah, because usually inline fours are synonymous with top end horsepower, but yeah. not so much torque. Well, this one, uh, well, it's it something was, else. It right? was quite surprising. Yes. And the weight on this motorcycle, if you get the regular S one thousand double R, that's four hundred thirty four pounds. But the M package, it drops to four twenty seven pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some Which metallurgy, it, you know, they yeah. they swap out plastic with carbon, carbon fiber, fiber with plastic and forged wheels as opposed to cast, cast wheels. wheels. That's the biggest yes. saving right there. Uh, weight and friction are power robbers. The more you can reduce the weight and the more you can reduce the friction, the more of the horsepower that's being generated by your engine actually makes it to the ground. ground. And the reduced weight of the wheels, which reduces your unsprung weight, helps uh, flicking from right to left. You can really feel the difference in, in those transitions. This bike is jam-packed full of features, and for a super bike, it even has cruise control. Like, cruise I don't wild cruise control on a super bike? On a super bike. Some people debate about yeah. cruise control on a super bike. You know, why would you want to have cruise control on a super bike? Well, fact is, is you know, you're leaning forward, you you got weight, you're leaning forward, you got weight on the front, which also means you're putting weight on your wrists. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, being able to put on that cruise control and letting go of your right hand and, sh you know, let mm -hmm. some blood back into that hand, it really helps. It's really nice. It's a nice feature. And then obviously it's got traction control and anti-lock braking, braking systems, systems and, and quick shifters. ABS, and lean ABS, sensing, yeah, ABS. The other thing that we probably need to point out is the fact that we put this bike on stands, right? Uh -huh. Uh, these are pit bull stands, both front and rear stands. It most certainly makes servicing your bike or paying or storing it much, much better. Uh, you're keeping it upright, you're keeping it solid, the bike doesn't go anywhere. You don't have to worry about it being dropped or you dropping it. It makes taking care of your chain very right. easy. You know, it makes cleaning the wheel really, really, really easy, easy, right? Because yeah. yeah. you got it up off the ground, you're spinning, you can spin the wheel while you're wiping it down. I'm gonna have the ignition on so you can see the DRLs, the daytime running lights, and man, they look nice. They look like those little eyes staring at you. I love the design. I love these lines of this bike, like they're lines all along. It's it's very beautifully done. This bike has a 23 and a half degree rake angle. What's the rake angle, you ask? We'll draw a perpendicular from the steering column. Follow the fork tube, that's the rake angle. Shorter the rake angle, the more nimble the bike is, and larger the rake angle, the more stable it is at higher speeds, highway speeds, and such. In the front, we have dual 320 millimeter disc brakes with Brembo brakes. I think it's a four-order brake caliper. 
inverted front forks for better handling beautiful finish all around you have a little bit of the bronze subframe showing the monoshock suspension with the red coils beautiful you have a single exhaust coming out and this one has the Acropovich exhaust already installed so this is gonna sound really good coming on to the side it's a chain drive a beautiful clean chain there of course this is brand spanking new that chain design and flow continues throughout now this ha it has a six speed and you have the quick shifter so both up and down moving on to the tank here this is a nice paint job here and it has a couple of plasticky bits over here and here uh, in my opinion they don't look like super cheap plastic or anything as for the console here you have a big tft screen These, it has the electronic suspension the switches on the left hand side now this bike has some goodies this has cruise control passing lights uh, hazards it's traction control menu and down below you have the turn signal and the horn i don't know if you can see the horn but it's down there and this is a beautiful BMW wheel that you can use to toggle through the menu. On the right hand side, you have heated grips, your riding modes and the kill switch on the starter button. Let's start her up. You get a nice little graphic of the 1000 RR. Uh, you get this beautiful tachometer, digital tachometer, speedometer, your riding mode on top. Now if you press the menu button down, you go into different options. You have my vehicle. So if you select my vehicle, you get a bunch of options for the messages, fuel range, your trip computers, your tire pressure. It also tells you whenever your next service is due. Now, if you go into sport, this is your sport display. Sport display tells you which level your traction controls at, how your braking's going, and yeah, you can also you have a, you also have a lap timer. And then this is the cool, cool display. So these are all of the different sport display on the s 1000 rr navigation and media these are and phone these have to you have to be connected with the app you have to download the app and connect through your app to access all of these then you have your settings the usual you have your racetrack mode conf configuration vehicle setting system setting connections display information and you can reset all of them uh, can you tell our viewers a little bit about motorcycles of greensboro yes motorcycles of greensboro is a motorcycle enthusiast center and yes we sell motorcycles and yes we sell accessories and yes we provide service and uh, yes we sell apparel but we don't do it in the definition of what, you know, my stereotypical idea of a dealer is a pushy sales guys, you know, do it today. If I do this, can you do it today? You know, mm -hmm. when are you going to take it home? No, we don't do that. We're here to share our knowledge, our stories. Definitely want to hear your stories. But yeah, we're, we're here basically to just support motorcycling in the local area and anybody who's willing to come to vi come visit us or call us on the phone. Motorcycle people just hanging out. Yeah. Now the staff here, they are very friendly. I'll put the website link in the video description below. Walk in here, have a chat with any of these amazing guys that work here. And if they come down here, Professor, who should they say send them to you? They definitely should tell us that the bro man sent them. Yes, tell them the bro man sent you and they'll know you're here for a good time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's right. speaking of time, Professor, do you happen to know what time it is? Ah, uh, bro, it's right o'clock, brother. <laughs> it's right o'clock, let's go. <laughs> All right, so if you're new to bro man, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. We put out content every week and your support would mean a lot. So let's do our first test. Let's make a couple of U-turns and see how this bike maneuvers. <laughs> U-turns should not be a problem. I don't think and no, it's not. It's easy peasy. All right, it means it's time to do our second test, the pull test, let's go. <laughs> oh, the power is crazy and the braking is crazy so let's talk about the first impressions of this motorcycle this is probably the most comfortable leader bike or sports bike i've sat on the ergonomics is such that you're you don't have much weight on your wrists and stuff like uh, the tank design is such that your legs kind of go into it so you are squeezing the tank anyways and uh, no weight here see my arms are all loosey goosey so and that's how it should be so if you've got to keep your arms loose so you can do this <laughs> especially if you're on the track or whatever 
this bike has a bunch of rider aids you have auto shift up and down and uh, traction control stability control hill start assist cruise control heated grips so yeah this bike is uh, you get a little bit of everything and it's that inline four so it's so smooth i love this balance of on the motorcycle man bmw did such an amazing job here i love the seating position my legs are uh like it's an aggressive riding stance uh, but it's not uncomfortable they're not being strained at all and i keep grabbing grabbing the clutch i keep forgetting this has uh the quick shift so you really don't need the clutch you can shift up and down uh without the clutch i mean except for when you when you're trying to find neutral <laughs> see i love the balance man check this out it's just staying sitting upright doesn't want to go one way or the other at all i like it and speaking of the seat so if you wanted to scoot back let's say and tuck in it's perfect your arms kind of tuck in with you and you're ready to go <laughs> let's scoot around this bus now if you want to sit up upright a little bit and you want to come closer you can do that as well now is this a bike that you could use for commuting well uh there is no storage to speak of none no saddlebags uh or any uh, any such things but you could i like the riding position and the ergonomics you probably could do a little bit of commuting with a backpack and uh that should work out just fine it should be good for commuting now how about touring would this be good for touring uh, i don't think any sport bike is going to be awesome for touring especially if you're looking to tour long distances but if you wanted to tour let's say short distances uh maybe 100 miles or so i think you should be fine uh but the other thing about touring is you don't have any space for luggage of any sort so i don't know <laughs> uh well yeah take take a backpack and go touring maybe mm. is this a good bike for beginners um no this motorcycle has 205 horses that is not a number that a beginner should be riding nope 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 no <laughs> no other than that you know it costs a lot of money and insurance is gonna be high for a beginner no matter what bike you get and a leader bike let alone a s1000 double r is gonna go through the roof oh low fuel go away hmm. and this button this little wheel does all of the magic stuff huh so the one thing i noticed on this bike that i've also noticed on my v2 these mirrors i mean you can look out of these mirrors fine like mostly you see your shoulders but at certain speeds like if i go above 50 yeah you see they start vibrating i don't know if you can see it on the camera but they start vibrating and uh they're pretty much of no use that's the same thing that I have faced on my V2. All right, let's talk about the cost of ownership. So this motorcycle requires its first break-in service at 750 miles and then a service at every 6,000 miles or one year, whichever comes first. These services should typically cost you about $400 at your local BMW dealership. The other major service that they, this bike requires is the valve check and adjustment and all that fun stuff, but that's not until 18,000 miles. Tires on this motorcycle should get you about 10,000 miles, but a a lot of it is gonna depend upon how you ride it the more you rip it the sooner the tires are gonna go and the set of tires for this bike front and rear should cost you about 650 dollars so over a two-year period assuming you ride 5,000 miles a year you would require the three services and a set of new tires for a total of 1850 divided by the number of days it's about two dollars and fifty cents a day let's assign it a score shall we on the looks it's a nine out of ten on the brop it's a nine out of ten on the maintenance, it's a 7 out of 10. 
And on the comfort, it's an 8 out of 10 for a combined Broman score of 8.25 out of 10. So in conclusion, man, this S1000RR, it's the premium leader bike that you that's available on the market from BMW. It looks awesome. It sounds awesome. It's easy to ride. It handles like a dream. It's actually quite comfortable as far as leader bikes and sports bikes go. The only knock of source that I would have on this bike is that it just feels too easy to ride like it's almost got no soul of sorts like you know when you're riding a big powerful bike you want that feeling of like you you are overcoming something and trying to tame a beast i mean don't get me wrong this is still a beast but with all the electronics and the design and the engineering it's it's just very easy to ride <laughs> is this the bike for you go to your closest bmw dealership take one out for a spin and see what you think about it thanks for watching guys keep your knees in the breeze and i'll see you next week bro out